Greetings, greetings, greetings and salutations one and all. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Night Shift with DJ Kevin Stew. How you doing, how you doing, how you doing? It feels like it should be Friday. Welcome to the end of the Night Shift week. Welcome to the night we do a thing we call Real Talk. Kicking it off tonight to the sound of Jay Dell. The track is called Link Up. of JDL Jack called Link Up Hey man, well, when are we gonna link up? When are we gonna drink up? When we gonna do all of them things there? Isn't this lady here keeping us apart? You know, the one that is named after the beer. Wanna officially welcome each and everyone to the broadcast. Those tuned in on TuneIn Radio, the night of the DJ Kevin Stew. If you're locked in out of New Jersey on NIE Radio, big ups to you and the, mo- the motivator. Remember you catch motivator. Thursdays and Saturdays, Thursday night to Double Trouble Thursday. Saturdays and Saturday, motivation Saturdays. Big ups to those on the Foundation Radio Network, ClintonLindsay.com. You catch Mr. Lindsay every day from midday to three on the Foundation Radio Network. Big ups to those locked in on PEMGTV.com. If you're checking in on Facebook Live, much love to you, respect. Thank you for tuning in. 
Remember, it's only a segment broadcast. Come on over to the home of the Night Shift to DJ Kevin Stew, where you're encouraged to have acceptance through enlightenment. It's called KevinStew.com, and welcome to those who are there. So glad to have each and every one of you. Couldn't do it without you. And you have my word, I wouldn't even try. What is a good question? When are we going to link up though? I want to say thank you to my segment sponsor, Paul C Media Group. When being in the moment is priceless, get him a call. They take care of your videos, your photos, your streaming, your ads. They can do everything you see here on KevinStew.com and more. So you have a, uh, an event you want to broadcast on a secure platform, live and in living color. Go ahead and get them a call. 754-999-1140. Or check them out at PulseEMG.com. Your church service, your funeral, your wedding, your party, your graduation, you name it. A seminar. Call them up and say, hey, I heard Kevin Stew talking about you being able to do some things. Here's what I want to do. Can you help me with this? You won't know what they can do unless you give them a call. 754-999-1140. Doesn't really matter where in the world you are either. Hey, steady, how you doing? Hey, listen. Those of you on Facebook Live, invite me to share with a friend. Call a friend. Tell a friend. Friends of your friends, friends of your enemies, enemies of your friends, and your enemies too. Call up everybody. Steady, you'll only know when you give them a call. So tonight, we're back on the couples tip. And not, not, not on it in a way where we're advising people how to live their lives as couples and anything like that. No, 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 no. Not at all. There is this, it's called LAT, L-A-T. And some some people do it. Uh, the first time I heard of a couple doing it had to have been almost 20 years ago. I was on a flight from California to Florida. And there was a lady sitting beside me. And she said, my husband is on that plane over there beside us. And I was like, is he going to a meeting before coming home? I, 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 I was puzzled and, you know, I, I, I immediately became inquisitive. And since she decided to share with me the information about her husband, I figured it was okay to find out why. And she said, no, he is heading home. I said, okay, so you are going somewhere before going home? She said, no, I'm heading home. And I guess she saw the puzzled look on my face. And she said, we live in separate places. What we do is choose a location to meet up and we both fly there. And we spend a weekend together or a few days, take a few days off and spend that time together. And then we go back to our individual homes and I'm like and you're still married happily married and she's like yes and we've been doing this for years and here came the kicker she said 
Maybe had we not been doing this, we wouldn't still be together today. And I was like, huh, really? No, I don't remember much more of a conversation with her because this one was a long flight, two hours tired, and I slept for most of it, including the part where I, w I woke up over Texas three times. And it was one of them red-eye flights also. Literally red-eyed. Boy, let me tell you. <laughs> but that part of the flight, you know, is, is, is another story. But the whole thing with this lady, that stood out for me. And funny enough, I never addressed it until now. So tonight we're looking at couples living apart. And it is actually defined as living apart together. It is, it is called living apart together. L-A-T. And it refers to couples who are in an intimate relationship, but choose to live separately for various reasons. Whether financial or personal or both. Now, I made this post about this broadcast tonight and in one of the groups that I posted it to, someone commented and said, they must have a lot of money. And I thought, hmm, that is a good point to make. They, because here you are, two individuals with the potential to save money by living under the same roof. But instead, spending money but being together. Spending money to have individual places. And they may very well and live in the same city. But they choose not to live together. And I thought, boy, I'm going to really have to look into this one. So, to learn more about this growing trend, according to Brides.com, they consulted Bella De Paolo, De Paolo and Cherie Sims Allen. Because if it works for Gwyneth Paltrow and her husband, Brad Falchuk, then it just may work for some other people too. Right? So, uh, Bella, Bella De, De Paolo is, a, is an academic a researcher and author of How We Live Now, Redefining Home and Family in the 21st Century. And Sherry Sims Allen, PhD, is a psychologist and relationship expert in Los Angeles. And De Paolo says, we are in a whole new era of couples living apart. Couples used to live apart mainly because they had no choice. For example, one or both had good jobs in different cities or even in different countries that they couldn't give up. Now, that's still the case for some, but the trend of choosing to live apart, regardless of your job situation, is actually on the rise. What is relatively new or newly getting recognized are couples living apart because, well, they just want to. Or at least one person in the relationship wants to. And thank, thank you, Juliet. Um, Dr. Kelly Ray, how are you doing? So Kelly Ray says, I have a friend who, whose dad was married to a woman and they lived separately. Now, again, is it a thing that, that, that people have been doing for a while and we just didn't know about it because it wasn't, uh, it wasn't trending on social media? Or is it really new? 
um, Kellery goes on to say they were happily married. This was not their first marriage, so they already had established lives before meeting. So they didn't want to shake up what they already had. So they kept it going. And they were comfortable with it. And quite happily married. And I'm, I'm wondering if this couple, Dr. Kelly Ray, I'm wondering if, 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 if this is the woman that I met on that plane some, what, 18 years ago, traveling from California. Uh, Mauricio, how are you, bro? I want to say special big ups to, to, to Mauricio Healing from Brazil. Welcome, welcome to the broadcast, bro. So, just like people are choosing to marry or have children and such, some are choosing to go a different route when it comes to their marriage. Especially for people who have spent their 20s and 30s single and living alone. Independence can be tough to give up. I see it as a possible growing trend as singles look at ways to connect that won't cost them their preferred lifestyle or way of life, says Sims Allen. So, basically, these individuals have... A set they they have they are set in their ways they they like their their life the way it is, and they're comfortable with keeping it that way, even though they have expanded and taken on to themselves a partner so at least if if one of them is okay with it, I guess it's okay. Um, Dr. Kellery says I, I think it works well for seniors as well they have companionship and they have their independence alright so let's reason this out a little bit numbers to call numbers to text if you want to connect with me directly 773-789 stew 773-789-7839 that's 773-789-7839. You can call, text, WhatsApp, Telegram, any of those you can use to get in touch. Of course, go to kevinstew.com. The, the link is pinned in the comment section for those of you on Facebook Live. Come on over to kevinstew.com where you're encouraged to have acceptance through enlightenment. This is the home of the Night Shift of DJ Kevin Stew. This is where you get the whole broadcast. On Facebook, it's only a segment. So come jump into the stew pot. For those of you wondering what the stew pot is, it is where we keep things interactive and bubbling. Some call it a chat room, but because we're fancy on kevinstew.com, we call it the stew pot. So come on in. You don't need to register for anything. You don't need to offer your firstborn. You don't need to give up your spleen. Nothing like that. Just come and go to the website and boom, you're there. Go to the chat and comment. We just ask that you keep it um, positive. We ask that you keep it decent. Don't be disrespectful. No cursing. But your, your opinions are welcomed. There's no such thing as a stupid question or a dumb opinion. Nothing like that. All right? Cool. Much love, Mauricio. Thank you. All right. So some things to consider if you are curious about maintaining a living apart together romance l a t living apart together <laughs> it's 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 kind of hard a, a, it's an odd concept to wrap your mind around when especially when all you've known is meeting someone and moving towards living together, whether as a married couple or as a couple without marriage, out of outside of marriage. But just being a couple, it means we live together. We are going to cohabitate. Now, 
<laughs> versus the others, Julie. <laughs> All right, so couples decide to live separately for different reasons. Whether it is because they love their solitude and space, they have to be in different locations for work or financial reasons, or because they feel like not being together constantly actually strengthen, strengthens their bond. Who would have thunk it? Well, they do say absence makes the heart grow fonder, right? But on the flip side, they say too much absence makes one wonder. So, where do you strike the balance? Living apart might offer some relief to couples who value their individual space as well as each other, says Sims Allen on Brides.com. If you each have established careers across the country from each other, but you meet on a cross-country flight and the sparks fly, you fall in love, boom, bang, bing, you might decide it's best for you both. Uh, well, for both of you and your relationship to keep your jobs, at least for a few years. Or maybe one person loves the mountains and the other needs the ocean, but you make it work anyway. You know, something like that. The couple loves each other, but don't feel they need to live in the same house to express their togetherness, says Sims Allen. Um, and she says, uh, of um, the people who choose to live apart because of personal preferences, they have an arrangement that is outside the box of traditional marriage. Maybe having your own dedicated space is crucial for your well-being. And your partner understands that. It's a conversation that should happen early on and both partners should be on board. Or at least willing to try and see if it works for them. You know, <laughs> hey, I'm not saying it's the thing to do. I'm not saying it is not the thing to do. I'm saying if the individuals have that level of communication and okay it is recommended that you do it early in the relationship right let's let's see how this goes run a scenario now whether or not my scenario is on point eh. um maybe we should ask the the one who works with individuals, um, the expert on the matter, who is hanging out with us. Maybe we should ask Dr. KRB, you know. But here's the scenario, and this is how I see it. Scenario as according to DJ Kevin Stew. Absence when he's out of the house, that is definitely not for me. <laughs> I get you steady. <laughs> All right, so you are one that he has to come back to the house for you. Um, so both parties have to be aligned with with this concept and aligned with their values. I get you, Doctor Kerabi. So here's here's. Can you see this playing out like this? early in the relationship and the man says okay here's 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 how i see this babe um i like my space and i like you and as far as i know women typically the idea is for us to move in together but I want us to live apart, but be together. That's, am I, am I off with that scenario? Or am I spot on? Because that is how I, I typically see if a guy is saying it, that, that that's how it's going to go. Um, okay, if anybody is saying it, that's how it's going to go. 
something to that effect. Guy or girl presenting the situation. Um, and I am thinking, generally, a woman would want to say, okay, you know, we've been in this relationship for X amount of time. I think it's time we move to the next step. And, you know, we look to move in together because here are the benefits, right? And some men would probably say, come with the same argument. You know, okay, um, this is a great financial decision to make. And us guys, we pretty much come from that angle. You know, it's, it, it would save us a lot of money. Now we can do a lot more with our money. We can, have, uh, we can take a lot more trips. We can do a lot more because we are consolidating these. We, we don't have two light bills to pay anymore. Uh, we don't have two rents or two mortgages. You know, uh, things like that. Not taking into consideration at all that things may fall apart. Because who gets into a relationship for it to end anyway? So I'm guessing this would be the way to go. So guy presents situation, the scenario to the girl. Her response in my head goes something like this. Oh, you want us to live apart, but you still want us to be together. What is going on? What is it that you have going on that you don't want me to know about? You have other relationships? You have children that you don't want me to know about? You, you, what, what, what's, what's going on? Are you a drug dealer on the side? What do you have going on that you don't want me to know? That's typically the response, right? That, is that how anybody else sees this playing out? Or am I the only one that, <laughs> that see it possibly going that way? Okay, so Steady says, basically, that is not, I am not the woman for you. <laughs> that is Steady's response with, with a scenario like that being presented to her. I'm just not the woman for you. Um, let's end it right now. But let's say you've been together for two years. And think now, okay, we've been testing this out. This is where we should go. Because the suggestion was that it would be a discussion early in the relationship. What point in a relationship is early? At what point do you bring up something like this? And you, you don't know until you get to that point, whether it's, too early or too late. <laughs> um, Dr. KRB says, Oh, I see. This is, this is her responding. Oh, I see. You want all the benefits, but not under one roof. Oh, no, sir. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Uh, where, where, where are the men? Where are the men in this? Um, so, gentlemen, we are presented with the scenario. Hey, you know, I want to be with you. You are the man of my dreams. I have been looking for you all my life. However, I want us to live the way we've been living since we met. I don't want us to live together. Gentlemen, what is the response? Because I, I guess I can't really say I, I can answer for all men because I'm kind of a different kind of a guy and have gotten into trouble with different people over the years for being a different kind of a guy. You know, it it is what it is. Seven seven three seven eight nine Stu gets you in touch. Seven seven three seven eight nine seven eight three nine. That's seven seven three seven eight nine seven eight three nine. You can call, text, WhatsApp, Telegram, any of those things. They all work. 
come on over to kevinstew.com. We're going to take a break. We're going to jump off Facebook Live and continue the broadcast on kevinstew.com. Come on over. <laughs> let's, let's continue this banter. Um, Dr. KRB, <laughs> you know, have you ever heard of this situation? Has anybody come to you saying, you know, um, Doc, here is our situation. And my partner is giving me a hard time presenting with, 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 with going forward with this. I want them to understand that I love them, but I love me too. And making this change to being under the same roof, I won't be able to give them the best part of me. Has that ever been the situation of anyone coming to you, Dr. Kerabi? I'd, I'd love to know. Um, have anybody listening in, has, has any of your friends come to you and said, you know, <laughs> I, I, I love him, I love her, but if we change our current living situation, I don't think it's going to work. I want to say big ups to 1689. Much love. Welcome to the broadcast. Um, Dr. Kirby says, I have not had a guy come to me saying, hey, can you help me convince her why a part would be good? So have you had a woman coming to you saying, help me convince him that that would be good? <laughs> Dr. Kelly Ray, please. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and I wonder, what has the numbers been like? Statistically speaking, I wonder how many women have presented this to their male partners versus the men presenting it to their female partners. I wonder. <laughs> and that's how the fight started, right? We're going to take a break. When we come back, we continue on... In, in Real Talk on the Night Shift to DJ Kevin Stewart, looking at couples living apart. The concept is called LAT, living apart together. Come on. <laughs> hey, I, I, I didn't write it. I didn't make it up. I'm just presenting it. All right? <laughs> we'll be right back after these messages. Quality Media Group, innovative streaming and recording, has done it again. A new way to get your business in full view of your neighborhood consumer through AdShare TV. It's available in your neighborhood today. It's easy. Just call us. 754-999-6020. Become a host today and place a TV monitor in a strategic location so it's easy to see. Get a one-minute video ad or longer that plays anywhere in our network. Can't be a host? No problem. For a few dollars, we'll run your 30-second video ad. A host can run announcement specials like buy one, get one free, or discount ads. Let's turn your flyers into a 30-second video with music, or a voiceover, or let us create and run your video ad with a spokesperson. Take advantage of our early enrollment discount. Join us today. Your ad will be seen at least 30 times per day in your AdShare TV neighborhood. It's easy. Just call us. 754-999-6020. Add Sheer TV, part of Pulse Media Group. Yes, my people, check out I Red Fox. On Reggae Global Radio, every Saturday at 8 p.m. with Kev Stew, we all give you a pre life. Uh, brand new! Good for you! Kick away like a ball if you don't see a dance song. You hear that? Imagine having our own Caribbean center. Imagine a museum highlighting our history and the contributions of Caribbean people to the world. Imagine being able to visit and learn about the islands we call home in a place where our kids can see and feel their cultural heritage. You can make this vision come to life. 
help us create this first of its kind space that all Caribbean people can be proud of. Your contribution to Island Space Caribbean Museum will help this dream come true. Visit islandspacefl.org slash GoFundMe. Visit islandspacefl.org slash GoFundMe. Visit islandspacefl.org slash GoFundMe and donate today. This is Yishka. Check out It's Our Time, track 14 on The Juggling Volume 1 album. Hashtag download it, share it, request it. Bless up, one love. Reggae Global Entertainment presents the brand new self-titled album from Yishka with nine great songs. Oh Baby Let Me Love You. Be grateful for life. Be grateful for life. Shake you down. Girl, I wanna shake you what down. else can I do? Babe, come over. My, my, my. It's our time. You know I love you. For your love. I'm falling. Yishka, nine great songs, available on all streaming platforms. Available now. It's Chris Sinti representing for DJ Kevin. You see me, I say, I don't know the boss. You see me, I say, DJ Kevin's two on a night shift radio show. Yo, it thing up, the thing turn up, the thing loud. Whoa. DJ Kevin Stew of the heart of a champion Never underestimate, just choose him The silver line behind the dark clouds DJ Kevin Stew believe him and that's no doubt Sell out the night shift with a show of the city It's a hot to talk Love Sound of Lindo. Vibes never stop. Lit on track is called Unbreakable. Everything must matter. Oh, you're so bad, but look so simple. Smile, they got. I want to say thank you to my segment sponsor. Althea and her healing heavenly hands. Althea SU is a licensed massage therapist that comes to you. Operating out of Broad County, North Miami Dade, and South Palm Beach counties. Give her a call. 9546559000 she brings her table her oils and over 20 years massage therapy experience in those healing heavenly hands every time i'm with you baby you drive me crazy 
You can also email her to set up your appointment, theolater at att.net. That's T H E A L A T E R at att.net. She only has one request outside of you paying her, and that's you get off her table and go sleep somewhere else. Why? Because I always fall asleep on her table. You and me together, it will be forever. And I've heard others say, listen, I have fallen asleep on her table too. You was my girl from the start. So it must be a thing, a real thing. I understand the request. Yeah. You know that I ain't Give her a call, tell her DJ Kevin Steele sent you. 954-655-9000 That's 954-655-9000 And make an appointment to get your massage today The zone of Lindo Track call Unbreakable So if we are unbreakable we, This is how we see our relationship And um <laughs> And one person presents the scenario that we live apart, but remain as a couple. Does that work? According to Brights.com, there are some pros and cons to this concept of living apart together, this LAT concept. Now, living apart means decorating whenever you want, making your own schedule, or seeing friends and relatives without feeling guilty about splitting time with your spouse. But is that really the case, though? Because if you're not together and you spend time together virtually, doing these things, isn't it taking away from your virtual togetherness time? Mm. It also means seeing much less of your partner depending on your schedules and distance and ability to come together sims allen says that married couples who choose to live apart can have a rich and intimate life that focuses on the heart of the relationship and not the daily details of existing together and running a household meaning your relationship won't be defined by the daily stresses of whose turn is it, is it to take out the trash or who didn't close the kitchen cabinets or any of the things that you argue about under the same roof. Having breaks allows your time together to be about bonding and spending quality time instead of just time. And this is what the lady was saying to me on that flight. When we get together, she said, we don't have time to argue about anything because the time together is so precious. All we have time to do is to just love on each other. And here it is, you know, they're talking about that bonding time, that QT that is spent just focusing on each other, not the everyday running of life. De Paolo says that when LAT couples come together, they focus on what they enjoy about each other and don't spend a lot of time fretting about the small stuff. That happens that you can deal with the small stuff over the phone or by way of virtual connections. There are disadvantages to the relationship also, to this arrangement. If there are any insecurities in the relationship, jealousy, that green-eyed monster can come into play if one or both partners feel like they're being ignored or if they worry about where their spouse is and what they're doing. There's that. But let me ask this question now. When you take that into consideration, there's the wondering and the fretting, what is he, what is she doing at this point in time? Doesn't that happen when you live under the same roof? So if the same thing can happen under the same roof as living apart, then you can live apart. Brides.com has a tip and they said it is important to check in frequently and listen to how your partner is feeling about living apart. 
That's if you're doing the LAT thing. There's also the possibility, as one of the cons, that you will grow apart and seek out a new love who lives closer to home. The key to combating these challenges, according to Sims Allen, is that both partners need to remain flexible. What exactly do you mean when you say flexible in a situation like this? Is it that you're saying, okay, the people involved need to understand that some other person may come in occasionally to make sure that everything is working fine, but ultimately it is the two of you in the relationship that matter you know what does this flexible how does that look in a situation like this communicate about the the fact that things are not working and stay open to going the more traditional route if it's worth it to both of you this is when the cons come into play like any relationship, it's a process, and what worked well for a few months or a few years might not feel so ideal later on down the road. All right, let's look at that for a moment. Because when it comes to relationships, you know, people tend to get into relationships and expect that the way things are when they get started is the way they're going to be 20 years down the line. Well, I might be stretching it about 15 years, but, <laughs> you know, give or take 15 years. Um, down the line, they expect it to be the same way. And not realizing that people evolve. And if individuals are growing, then certain things about them would be changing. Right? Whether it's a physical growth or... Uh, uh, psychological growth, any which way you take it. Once there is growth, there is change. So, if an individual is, is, is growing and becoming more familiar with themselves and learning things that they actually don't like, that they used to like, it could change the whole dynamic of the relationship. So, if six months into the relationship... Your partner comes and says, hey, you know, I really like where our relationship is going. If we get to the point where we want to spend the rest of our lives together, at this point in time, I would like for us to stay living apart. Now, again, this could go either way. But. That could be the situation six months in. Two years in, that same person could come back and say, hey, listen, you know, um, I know what I said 18 months ago. But here's how I feel about this now. How do you feel about us getting a place together? How do you feel about moving to my house since it's already purchased? And you are renting. You know, things change. So, and, and this goes either way. You know, the, the living together now, you may feel, hey, listen, I love you, but I can't live with you anymore. I would like for us to live apart, but I don't want this relationship to end. There might be that, and it might have been something that developed over a course of time. You know, like I said, you know, uh, one of you might really like the mountains, and the other needs to have time to go surf. And because the, 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 the mountain is not 45 minutes away from the ocean, it's a problem. So you need to live apart. These situations are real though. So how do you know if it is something that is right for you? Having some alone time 
sounds amazing to most couples at some point. And if you're a couple and you don't think that you need to spend some time away from your partner, you must be a very new couple. <laughs> because all the seasoned couples I know enjoy some alone time. They enjoy time away from their partners. And it doesn't mean that they love their partners any less. So, according to brides.com, having some alone time sounds amazing to most couples at some point. But make sure you're fully committed to separate addresses and the daily lives before jumping into the LAT lifestyle. For those of you who are wondering what the LAT is, because you missed it at the beginning, it's the living apart together lifestyle. Be clear about why you want to live apart and make sure one partner isn't agreeing just to please the other. The question becomes whether you are strong enough in your commitment to your relationship to withstand living in separate households. Are you? Um, people should still be individuals even as couples. So you agree. Thank you, 1691. And I, I think that would be the, the main thing about that point that I was raising earlier. People lose their individuality when they get into relationships. Now, is that what, what, what they think, how they think a relationship is supposed to be? So they're afraid to be their own individual? And then, later on, start resenting themselves not necessarily their partner. They resent themselves for giving up their individuality. And in that resentment of self, now their partner starts to suffer. And they're explaining to their partners that, hey, no, 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 no. It, it's, it's not you, it's me. And now that becomes that cliche saying, it's not you, it's me. And that starts a whole different argument. And correct me if I'm wrong, any of you that know, this is where the, the, the whole you don't love me thing comes in. You're, why are you lying? Why did you lie to me? There's that. Why did you lie to me? When at the time, it wasn't a lie. It was very much true. And that was the situation, that was the relationship as it was presented. Boy, this whole relationship thing can go deep, can't it? Make no firm plans, according to brights.com, about living together or apart. <laughs> I have to pause. Because generally... When once you decide to start living together, that seems pretty permanent. But here they're saying on brides.com, make no firm plans about living together or living apart. Do what works for the preservation of your relationship or marriage. Sims Allen says she knows uh, of a couple where the husband lives in South Africa and the wife lives in New York. They loved where they each lived, loved their jobs, and loved each other. So, they, like a growing number of couples do, they make it work. Having a place of your own just isn't that unusual anymore, says De Paolo. Sometimes it is living with someone else that makes that takes some getting used to. Not the living apart. 1691 says, I think people need to look at their individual belief systems, specifically around relationships, and define what is important to them and that and that may even differ from what you were raised with, and that is okay. All right. 
let's let's dive into that a little bit. 1691. For those of you wanting to call in, six um or text in WhatsApp, Telegram, any of those things. Seven seven three seven eight nine stew. Seven seven three seven eight nine seven eight three nine. And that gets you into the studio directly. You can remain anonymous. That is fine. Once again, 773-789-7839. Let's, let's look a little bit about look, find, defining your, your or recognizing your individual belief systems. Correct me if I'm wrong. People entering in relationships often put on a persona that they want or think will attract the person that, they're, have, that they have their eyes set on. And then when they have hooked that person, when they have reeled them in, then they start to show their true selves. And that actually may end up causing problems, in my opinion. That is where you have the questions coming up and the accusations of lies. And if they were putting on a persona, rightly so, because they didn't share who they truly are. So looking at this statement here, people need to look at their individual belief systems, specifically around relationships, and, and, and define what is important to them. Looking at that, do they even know what their belief system is? Do they know what is important to them? If we are constantly learning ourselves and constantly evolving, chances are what I knew that I, what I knew about myself five years ago, I should know more today. I should have um, either dropped some things or picked up some things that I saw as beneficial to me as I grew. Now, if I remain at the same place that I was five years ago, then I think I should be questioned. Anybody else agree with me? You know, let me know. Put your comments in the stew pot. You know, give me some feedback. But that, that is my belief. And so, something that I don't know if anybody actually does this in their relationship. Let's check in. Let's see what, where our partners are. What has changed? You know, it's, it's kind of like when you go to renew your driver's license, you need to do an eye exam all over again, right? Something like that. Let's go ahead and reevaluate ourselves in our relationships. Does, does anybody actually do that? And now, in doing this, you could potentially save yourself some stress. Am I far off with that concept? Does anybody think that that is so, so, so outlandish? Because looking at relationships as we know it, I really believe people just think that it is supposed to go a particular way organically. And when it doesn't, then here comes trouble. Most people don't consciously look at their belief systems. They just know what they like. But the point is they should look at what they should look at why they like it and determine if it is still important moving forward. For example, I might think it's important to get married, but unless or until I look at why I believe that is important, then I'm just operating from my childhood conditioning. That right there. Thank you very much, sixty ninety one. We are conditioned to live a certain way. Whether we 
accept it or not, whether we recognize it or not, a lot of what we believe today is something that someone else told us when we were in our formidable years, you know, as children, you know, whether it is we saw it on TV because the show ended with a happily ever after and that is how it is supposed to end when boy meets girl and whatever. That's not necessarily the case. That might be how people might want it to be. But just like 1691 said, if we don't examine some of these things for ourselves, we're operating on childhood conditioning. Do we know for a fact that this childhood conditioning is right? At what point do you examine self to see, is this something that I really like? Is this something that I want to do? Is this belief the one that I subscribe to? Maybe it isn't and you're living a lie. But who are you lying to? Because it all starts with self. So in order to lie to someone else, you have to lie to yourself first. You may not believe it, but check it out. Every lie that you have told someone, didn't you go over it in your head? So who got the lie first? We're going to take another break. When we come back, we're going to talk some more. Um, we're looking at couples living apart. The concept is called LAT, living apart together. Call your friends, tell your friends, friends of your friends, friends of your enemies, enemies of your friends, and your enemies too, because we are all exposed to some of the same information. doesn't really matter where in the world you live. We all breathe the same air. We are all getting hit by the same sun. Some places it's cooler than others, but still. So we have some of the same life experiences. Share it with somebody. Let's talk. It's real talk. Right here on the night of the DJ Kevin Stew. We'll be right back after these few messages. And we get to wrap it up in a few, a little bit later. About half an hour or so with musical therapy. Yeah? Cool. We'll be right back. When being in the moment is priceless, consider the ability to share that moment. If you can video it, you can broadcast it. And Pulse E-Media Group has the tools you need. Weddings, birthdays, funerals, graduations, church services, parties, seminars, you name it. Pulse E-Media Group can provide you with a secure medium controlled by you to broadcast your event. Contact us at www.pulseemediagroup.com for more information. Pulse the Media Group, when being in the moment is priceless. Teddy Greaves Jr. with six brand new songs out now on his brand new EP, Teddy Greaves Jr. with songs you know and love like Can You Stop the Rain? Can you stop the rain? One Last Cry. One last cry. One last Can't Get Over You. Wait too, long. Wait, wait too long. You and I. You and I. You and, and I. one last cry, the acoustic version. Teddy Greaves Jr. Now available on all major digital platforms. Teddy Greaves Jr. Greetings and salutations. This is DJ Kevin Stew inviting you to bubble up and simmer down with me in the Saturday Stew right here on Reggae Global Radio. Get ready for the special segment called The Secret Ingredient, where you may hear from your favorite artist or producer. Saturday Stew happens every Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time exclusively on ReggaeGlobalRadio.com, where we get high on reggae. Matthew 28, 19 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. With this in mind, 
and encouragement received during a South Florida media conference, The Church Links was birthed. The Church Links is an interdenominational worship service portal for churches, providing the tools to spread the word through technology in a cost-effective way. The Church Links www.dahchurchlinx.com Your links to worship and praise. Hey yo, this is Caraman to let you know that right about now you are logged on to DJ Kevin Stew on the night shift. Don't move. Sin roses by bottles of champagne. Your favor, I'm great at keeping a promise. Roll letters, ten pages to tell ya I'm in it, I wanna stay. And I'll show you in every way. You're skeptical still. Well, I'm loving all you. And I'm super confused how my actions don't convince you. You're skeptical still. Back to the broadcast and say thank you to my segment sponsor Reggae Global Entertainment. Reggae Global will act as your booking agent, I handle your tour management, I'll take care of your copyrights, publishing, trademarks, business registration, legal service referrals, music production, and more. Give them a call 954 804 8199. Or check them out online, reggaeglobalentertainment.com Thank you, Reggae Global. The sound of Royce in the background track called If I Loved You. It's real talk right here on the night shift to DJ Kevin Stewart. Tonight, topic, couples living apart. So, is saying I love you enough? Is it enough to let that partner that lives somewhere else know that, hey, listen, you know, I I love you and that's all that matters. Many couples, according to psychology today, begin their relationships while living in separate homes. But today's couples continue living apart much after that initial period. A growing number of people decide to prolong this separation of living for years and sometimes indefinitely. Many simply feel good with living alone and, when partnering up, do not want to change their living situation. 
So the question is, do they move from that living alone to actually being couples? <laughs> the, the concept, again, couples live together, right? But who says they have to? And I, I, I think this is what is being addressed when looking at living apart together. Who says couples need to live together? To understand the extent of this phenomenon, one study shows that 7% of American women and 6% of American men report that they are living in a living apart together relationship, in a lat relationship. And while it sounds like a small share, it actually represents 35% of all individuals who are not married or cohabitating at the moment. Now, that makes it a larger number now, doesn't it? In France, around one in three adults live without a partner in urban areas, and as many uh, uh, in a, and as in many OECD countries, which countries are those? Around the, a quarter of these people report living in a stable, intimate relationship with someone who lives elsewhere. All in all, nearly 1 in 12 is in a stable, non-cohabitating relationship. So now, I, I guess in the last few years, that is the thing. It's a non-cohabitating relationship. So maybe that needs to be the talk. We are non-cohabitating versus a non-committed relationship because it's very much, they're very much committed to each other. They're just not cohabitating. Following these numbers, a, a study conducted by Arnold Regner, Regner Loyler, this is a French guy, which is why I'm struggling with his name, analyzes a 2013 to 2014 epic survey of individual and conjugal trajectories among 7,825 men and women aged 26 to 65 living in France. Viva la France! This study examines the prevalence of this rising phenomenon and the characteristics of people who choose this living arrangement long term. One of the most important things of this new study is that age is a crucial factor in understanding this growing phenomenon. At young ages, non-cohabitation is seen as a stage in the process of union form formation. Right? So I guess it's just one of those stages that you go through in getting to that union. However, above the age of 30, the reasons for not living together are different from those given by the younger age group. For older people, non-cohabitation is a longer-term arrangement and the proportion who intend to live with their partner decreases. For example, among 31 to 40-year-olds, relationships have lasted 3.6 years on average and 55% intend to live together within the next two years. However, among the 51 to 65-year-old group, relationships have lasted 11 years on average, and only 22% reporting planning to share, this, share a home in the future. Now, are they referring to a nursing home? I don't know. <laughs> um, no, they're not. Just, <laughs> I'm just playing. They're not referring to a nursing home. It might be, it might well be, however, that it is not a matter of age per se. Rather, older people might simply be more immune to social pressure and mainstream norms. So, it's a norm to live together, not necessarily a requirement. So, 
again, why would someone choose to live apart and be together? Now, psychology today has their reasons. And they're saying, at later stages, many non-cohabitors have already lived with a partner and may no longer wish to repeat the experience. So it was such a horrible experience, I don't want to do it all over again. <laughs> Indeed, if even one of the partners has been married, the probability of living apart increases. The study shows that two years after the start of, a, of the relationship, this probability is 42% if one or, or the partners was previously married. So if one or both of the partners have been previously married, it's 42% compared with 23% when neither has ever been married. So I guess when you've never been married, it's something to look forward to. You want to have that experience. But if you've been married before, not so much. Jacqueline Benson from the University of Missouri shows that living apart together contributes to feeling freer in the relationship. Partners also feel, feel more empowered to pursue friendships and interests outside of the relationship. Now, you see, you make statements like those and people immediately start to think, oh, you want to pursue other interests? Uh, what are their names? Yeah, you, you see where this is going, right? Now, again, is that a societal construct? Is it the norm? What is it? Did someone teach you that that is how you're supposed to think? Did someone tell you that is the question that you need to ask? Hey, cuz, how you doing? I didn't, I didn't heal you up earlier. Glad you could, you could pop in to hang out with us. Again, partners feel more empowered to pursue relationships and other interests outside the relationship. Others tackle fewer conflicts within their relationship because they are not fighting about the minor household assignments that often sabotage relationships of cohabitating couples. And most obviously, living apart gives one autonomy while also giving them, him or her, the option for intimacy. So the question might be asked, by a number of people why then get into a relationship might as well you just have friends with benefits well people want commitment so why not another perspective emphasizes the fact that such living arrangements allow the flexibility in going in and out of relationships in another study Arnold Regineer Loyalier analyzed three waves of the French generations and gender survey. The results show that after three years, 22% of people in a stable non-co-residential relationship, they keep adding new words, non-co-residential relationship are still with the same partner. And 12% after six years, the longitudinal data reveal again that older couples, among all older couples, non-cohabitation is more a form of coupledom in its own right, lasting more years. 1691 says, right, because for some religious beliefs would suggest if you're not married and together, then you could be committing a sin. So it is, if you're not married and living together, because here we're saying people are married and, and live apart. And, and I guess it comes from that, that going to scripture, going back to scripture to say, he who finds a wife, you know, you know take his wife and, and, oh shoot, now I'm mixing up the, the scriptures. Um, for all my, all my religious pundits, uh, you know, I, I, I do apologize. <laughs> I never said I was religious. I did grow up in church. I have you know, read sections of the Bible quite often. Um, however, I'm more spiritual than I am religious, so forgive me. Or not, your choice. No, I'm fine with it. 
Um, <laughs> but um, for this, a man leaves his mother and father and cleaves to his wife, basically implying, you know, leave the, the, the parental home and go make your own home. So it is the implication of living together under one roof as a married couple. Not explicitly expressing it, but implicitly. So it becomes, as it is interpreted by the individuals that are reading it, eh. let me not get into religion right now. Because that's going to open a whole different can of worms and cause a whole different set of problems leading to a whole different broadcast. But 1691, um, yeah, religious beliefs would suggest if you're not married and living to and together, then you could be committing a sin. Um, the sin of fornication. But if you're committed to each other, which is what a marriage is, right? A commitment to each other. Then how much of a sin are you committing? You are married, you're living apart. Where's the sin? Because you come together and do marital stuff. So where is the sin? You're still married. You're still doing whatever you're doing together. And I guess it, it, it works out better for older couples also because they're less likely to have um, other relationships other than the one that they're committed to because they just don't have the time for it. They want to play bridge and bingo. And when they meet up, they want to be loving on each other, right? They don't have time to be going out meeting new people to start new relationships all over again. But ain't nobody got time for that. So maybe that's why it works better for older couples than the younger ones that are running around finding themselves and testing the waters to see what works. Now, when you find a young adult behaving like an older adult, do you now say, oh, there's something wrong with them. They must have grown with their grandparents, so now they're acting like they're older than they actually are. Maybe it's just the way they are thinking. They have developed that, se that sense of... of, of that mental maturity, that psychological growth happened early in their lives because they read a lot or they spoke to scholars and, and they spoke to the elders and listened to them. So they didn't go through some of the trials and errors that others went through because they didn't take the time to listen and, and, and communicate with those that have gone before them and have gone through it. So they lived vicariously through those that have had the experience. What an amazing concept, learning from our elders. <laughs> it seems that people around the world have become more creative in finding alternatives to conventional marriage lives. They feel more empowered and freer to develop their own way of partnering up or simply choose to live on their own. Such ways of living are more accepted these days and are therefore expected to be more prevalent in the near future. Now, do we really expect to see more of this kind of life? Or is it something that is a fleeting illusion? What say you? Is it something that you would actually consider? We know Steady said earlier on Facebook Live that, hey, um, yeah, living apart together is not for her. <laughs> she, you know, she, that, that's pretty much how she feels about it. So, you who, you are not Juliet Steadman, uh, how do you feel about it? You know, as individuals, it doesn't really matter who says what. It doesn't really matter what your, your, um, your mentor says. It doesn't really matter what your, your idol says. 
what do you say? How do you feel about a particular thing? How do you feel about what you were always told as a child growing up? Your concept of, of that happily ever after, how it is supposed to look. Is that what resonates with you? Or does something else float your boat? And at what point are you going to stand up and say, you know, that doesn't work for me. Or I'm inclined to try this to see how well it works. What works for you? When are you going to choose? Greetings and salutations. Welcome to the night shift. Hello, Kevin. How are you? I am well. How are you? Great topic tonight. Thank you. Yeah, I think this is a really, really um, great conversation to have. And I appreciate you talking about this. I think it's really important. And I think we're very blessed that we are living in a time period where people can feel safe mm -hmm. to have more experiences like this as perhaps in days gone by where culturally it may not be acceptable. Okay, I get that. But are, are, they, are they really stepping up and is it that they're exploring this or this is, that, this is something that they, they, they really feel will work for them? Is it a trial and error? Is it, a, is it just a fleeting concept? You know, what have you seen? I think personally that people that are engaging in this kind of a relationship, definitely I think it's more successful when people are older because they've had more experience. And so they've thought about this, mm. you know, as opposed to somebody who's younger, who might just be going from their family's home into their own individual life. They're more than likely going to follow the example of what they were raised with. So it's conditioning. It's it's social conditioning. Right. Well, and there's an expectation, right? When you're in your 20s, you're trying to figure out who you are as well as not maybe disappointing your family or bringing shame to them or, you know, the kind of the pressure to be who you want, they want you to be, you know, so it's kind of breaking those ties. That's what I think happens for people that are in their 20s is they get to start to explore things for themselves. But it is based on the findings, based on, on, on what I've been presenting tonight on, on, um, from Psychology Today, from Brides.com, the consensus is it is the older individuals that are, are going against this societal norm. Not the, the, the younger the, ones. The LIT. Yes, not the younger ones yeah. who, who are adventurous. Right. Well, I think the the younger ones are still kind of riding on the coattails of their families as they kind of spread their own wings. However, I think the older generation, they may have more to lose, too, to go into traditional cohabitation. What do they have to lose? They've, they've done it before. They have experience. Well, one, now we, when you're in your older generation, you know, 60s, 70s or something, you're already established. Maybe you've already had a successful career retirement. You also have inheritances that you're leaving for your children, perhaps. Yes. And so there could be concerns with commingling those households. Um, without trying to get all a bunch of legal stuff involved protecting assets and that. I mean, and I know that sounds kind of shallow, but it also, 60s and 70 year olds aren't 20 year olds just having a relationship for the first time who are sharing a toaster that they bought somewhere, right? right. They have much more to lose than a $7 toaster from Walmart. Right. But, you know, the 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 sixty year old that gets married and chooses to live apart, you know, the, 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 
the legalities of marriage still come into play if one passes on, you know, there's still claims on the, what is left, <laughs> you know? Right. Well, and that would also determine if, like, example, one of the examples I think I heard you say earlier today is what if somebody lives by the mountains and one lives by the beach or the people in the plane, maybe one lives in one state and one lives in another and then yeah. the legalese with regards to marriage could differ. Oh, I got you. Well, there's that too. Yeah, because in, 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 in some states, it, the, the laws could change, could be yeah, slightly different. Or, well, right. if they live in different countries, definitely it could be different. It could also potentially maybe impact their health insurance or any of the, I mean, there's a whole lot more things to consider when you're older than when you're younger. I mean, not to say young and dumb, but you know, you, you just don't have all of those experiences and things behind you that you would think about later in life when you've had more experiences. So let's explore that, 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 <laughs> that, that phrase, that saying a little bit in, this, in the context of this topic, being young and dumb. You're young, you start a relationship, and you see yourself with this individual for the remainder of your life, and you go the traditional route. You get married or not get married, but you cohabitate. Compared to <laughs> the experienced elder <laughs> who gets into a relationship and does not cohabitate. Young and dumb. <laughs> <laughs> You know, people use these terms so loosely, not taking into consideration something like this. Right. We don't know what we don't know, right? And it's exciting to have all of those <laughs> hopes and dreams and desires and all of that. And then bumps in the road happen and twists and turns and unexpected things happen. And, and, I know you talked about earlier that maybe it could come across as all of a sudden now where well, you're lying because you want to change the course of the relationship. But yes. I don't know that it's necessarily lying as much as it is. I wasn't expecting this part of the journey to come along and I don't right. really know how to handle it. Yeah, I, you know, I, I never knew that I would feel this way about this particular thing. I didn't know I wouldn't like rice anymore. And right. And and you make all these different rice dishes because you just love it. Right. Now it becomes a bone of contention in the relationship. Who knew rice would cause our breakup? Right, so maybe the thing is just get a duplex then, right? And have a common wall that you can <laughs> go through or something. <laughs> You don't have to travel. <laughs> but I, I, I think a part of the joy is the anticipation of the journey. That, 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 you know, you're planning for that moment when you're going to be together. And it takes two hours to get to the place where you're going to finally see that person that makes your heart race and your loins get excited you, you know yeah that and that is missing when you don't have that travel that travel time because you think about it these the early part of the relationships when you have the 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 um um the oh shoot what's it called the new relationship energy NRE is bubbling up. That is when you, you even a half an hour drive is so exciting. That's <laughs> very true. Imagine keeping that throughout the course of your relationship because you do not live together. How's that for a concept? Yeah. How exciting. You know, and then we have to think about, I mean, again, if we're looking at this, this thing that you're, this uh, 
statistics and psychology stuff, again, I can see how it could work for people who are older because they've already raised their children and now their children have gone off and are in college or married and having their own family. So there's no longer that aspect tied with it either. Like okay. how, how would we do that if we live separately with having children? Oh, and the couple that I mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast, they have children too, grown children now. This now becomes another issue mm -hmm. because here are the children looking at their parents living apart and aren't they going to ask the question, wait, hold on. So if we are supposed to be a couple and get a house together because that is how it's supposed to go, why are you two living apart? Would they even ask that? Would they even know? I never asked my parents why they stayed. Why Why did you guys get married and why are we living in this house together? Well, everybody else is doing it. So that's the norm. So it must... Considered norm, right. I mean, so, right. I mean, if parents were divorced, the kids who were divorced, that could be normal. I mean, especially when you're really, really young, you just assume however you're living is how everybody else lives. But we know the reality is when we get behind somebody else's doors, we see differently. Another example of the norm not necessarily being right. Correct. <laughs> um, I, I don't know if you want to remain anonymous tonight or you want to let people know who you are and where to find you. <laughs> <laughs> the choice is yours. Do you want to remain anonymous? Because I haven't called your name. <laughs> yeah, so you know who this is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I definitely know who this is. <laughs> so it's up to you. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm just Kelly Ray calling in and enjoying your show, as I do every week. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. KRB. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and, and, and tell people where they can catch you on a regular basis and where they can find you personally if they want to get in touch and bounce some ideas off of you. Ah, thank you. Okay, so I am on the Monday morning radio show, Getting Through the Week, on WGLRO.com radio. Um and a whole bunch of other links. Or you can catch me on Facebook, Kelly Ray Brown, and it's K-E-L-L-Y-R-A-E. -L -L -E. It's all one word, and that's predominantly where I'm at. And also on Instagram at Ask Dr. Kelly Ray. Thank you very much. I, I, you know, I I always enjoy our little banters. You know, it, it, it it's it's always enlightening, and it, it always leaves me hungry for more which is what oh my I, gosh i so love your shows <laughs> i love wednesday night specifically because just a lot of it's mindset stuff that you bring that i find very yes. stimulating so that's super exciting and i hope that you're well rested today <laughs> actually i i was asleep 10 minutes before this broadcast. Can I tell you? I was asleep <laughs> and I'm ready to go back to sleep now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you need another doctor's note to rest some more? <laughs> Gee, hey, I'm, I'm going to need another doctor's note. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dr. Kirby, I thank you for calling in. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for helping me to stimulate appetites and not satisfy hungers. Yes. Well, thank you for bringing these topics. They're, they're so needed, and I love the way that you present it. I thank you. I, 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 I try it, and I hope to continue to do just as I am doing and even improve on it. Very well. Now go get some rest. Sorry. Uh, well, in another, what? 18 minutes after I do musical therapy. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Have a good night, Dr. Killeray. Thank you. You too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. <laughs> so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. To cohabitate or not to cohabitate, that is the question. This is brand new music. 
the first ever duet coming to you from Joanna Marie and Ed Robinson. Much requested. Now it's here, it's a reality. This is their rendition of Suddenly, Ed Robinson and Joanna Marie, right here, Musical Therapy, courtesy of McNeil Trucking. Thank you, McNeil Trucking, for sponsoring this segment of the broadcast. With McNeil Trucking, you're in good hands. Get him a call, 954-406-9740. Thanks much, guys. She walks in and I suddenly a hero. Take a name, my hopes begin to rise. Smash hit courtesy of originally done by Olivia Newton John and uh, Cliff Richard. Now reproduced by Ed Robinson and Joanna Marie. How can I feel you're all that matters when I rely on everything you say? And it's all about DJ Kevin Stew on the night shift. Hmm, you feel for some stew? Check out Kevin Stew. Thank you, Joanna Marie. Ready to say, and you show 
y'all are loving this song as much as I am. Do I feel so alive when you're near? There's no way any hurt can get through. Robinson and Jonah Marie becomes available on my birthday. Yes, it's my Earth Date gift. I'm claiming it. Suddenly becomes available on November the 5th. On all major platforms. Yep, it's a pre-release, y'all. This is the sound of our third. The track is called Only When Close. As we bouncing through, as we're bouncing through this musical therapy, wrapping up the night shift week, closing out real talk.
sound of Hezron. It's called Feels Like Heaven. Something to look forward to. Meeting up and just being in each other's arms, isn't it? The opportunity to go to heaven. Tony Gold. The rendition of the Roberta Flack Peebo Bryson hit. The closer I get to you. Another new, brand new track. Produced once again by the RG Squad. This is Suzanne Sultry. Her rendition of If You're Not Back in Love by Monday. I want to thank you each and everyone for locking in and logging on. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for participating. Encouraging you to look out for members of your community as we part company tonight. 
And remember, your community is not just the development that you live in, but it spreads far and wide. So those that you pass on the bus, on the plane, the boat, or the train, whether you walk, ride, or drive, these are members of your community. Do something good for one of them today, because you never know who's going to do something good for you tomorrow. My name is DJ Kevin Stewart. This is how I like to do it to you, for you, and with you every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, right here at the Night Trip with DJ Kevin Stew. I'll catch you all on Monday right here at 10 p.m. But before that, it's Saturday. The Saturday Stew on Reggae Global Radio, 8 p.m. Eastern. We get to bounce more tunes. Thank you again to McNeil Trucking. With McNeil Trucking, you're in good hands. Give him a call, 954-406-9740. Tell him DJ Kevin Stew sent you for your moving needs. Do remember, you all be good. But to see if you can't be good, go ahead and be good at it. Good morning, good afternoon, good day to you wherever you are in the world from right here in South Florida. I bid you all a good night. and salutations one and all. You're invited to tune in to the night shift with DJ Kevin Stew. It airs on Mondays with Community and Finance, Tuesdays with Healthy Love and Wednesdays with Real Talk from 10 p.m. to midnight Eastern Time. Come spend some time interacting in the stew pot where we keep things bubbling and wind down in musical therapy. The night shift with DJ Kevin Stew is on kevinstew.com where you're encouraged to have acceptance through enlightenment.